Chapter 21, No Place Like Home. Meanwhile, Hoagie had tried to follow Katie, but she was too fast. He wished he had Dipper to travel on, but instead he had to find Katie on his own. It was a large farm. Where could she have gone? Think, Hoagie, think, he told himself. He began to ask and answer his own questions. What is she trying to do? And talk to her parents. Okay, how is she going to do that? By getting out of the farm. How is she going to get out of the farm? Hmm. The gate. I've got to get to the gate. Completely out of breath, Hoagie booked it as fast as his teeny legs would carry him. He squeaked wildly once he saw Dipper and Dr. Shimko at the gate. When he finally reached them, he had a horrible pain in his side from running and thought his lungs would burst like a water balloon. Huffing and puffing, Hoagie leaned against Dipper. Have you seen Katie, Dipper? Hoagie sputtered. Uh, yeah. I think she jumped on me and flew over the fence, Dipper stammered. What? What do you mean you think she flew over the fence? Hoagie was astonished. Just what I said. One second she was here next to me, and the next second I felt a big thing jump on me, and she was gone. Dipper still couldn't believe it. None of this made sense to Hoagie. Sure, he had seen Katie popcorn many times, but to use Dipper as a trampoline to jump over a fence? No, he couldn't imagine Katie ever doing that. Dr. Shimko gasped with surprise as the little hamster squeaked to Dipper, and Dipper seemed to answer him with soft mumbles. Are you guys actually talking to each other? Dr. Shimko asked. The two animals glanced at Dr. Shimko and continued their conversation. Maybe I can try to jump over the fence too, Hoagie said as he crawled up on Dipper's head. Hoagie gave a few hops, but of course, he wasn't able to jump very high. Dr. Shimko let out a clear whistle when he noticed Hoagie jumping up and down on Dipper's head. Dr. Shimko could have sworn he saw the feisty little hamster quickly nod in the direction of the fence. Dr. Shimko finally decided to unlatch the gate. Hoagie and Dipper bolted toward the water. Hoagie really wanted to run all the way to his herd, but his tiny legs felt so heavy like huge stones. Eventually, he reached the group and collapsed face first in the sand. A bunch of younger capybaras immediately pounced on him. Dipper knew the capybaras had never seen a dog before, and he didn't want to scare them, so he stayed back, and he was able to control his natural instinct to bark. Dr. Shimko came out onto the beach and could not believe his eyes. There were capybaras all over the place, in the water and on the beach. Dr. Shimko found Dipper and patted his furry head. Good boy, Dip Dip. What a good guy, Dr. Shimko said. Dipper wagged his tail and smiled as the capybara herd surrounded Katie. Two huge capybaras were sniffling and nuzzling her. Katie squealed and giggled with delight. Mama, Dada, what are you guys doing here? Katie said happily. Your flamingo friends told us all about your journey, how you were cornered by an ocelot, how you were living with a furry monster, and how humans trapped you in their territory. At first we were scared that you would be forced to stay in a cage for the rest of your life, but your friends told us that you were happy and doing just fine, said Mama Kenzie. Didn't they tell you I would be coming home soon? I was going to rest a bit before heading home, Katie insisted. Flamingo Joe and said Hoagie would probably stay here since he found his humans. Katie girl, we would never let you travel all that way alone, Papa Kinsey said. Nah, Hoagie would never leave us for good. He would come back with me, then return here later, said Katie. She looked around for Hoagie and saw him being attacked playfully by the young capybara pups. Katie signaled him to join her and her parents. Tell them how you're going to go back and forth between islands, Hoagie, Katie said. Um, Katie, I've got something to tell you, Katie Hoagie couldn't look Katie in the eyes. Can you wait till later, Hoagie? Katie asked. Not really. I guess this is a good time as any to bring it up. I thought long and hard about it, Katie, and I think I should stay here for some time, Katie continued. Yeah, I already know that, Hoags. We talked about you living in both places. Now you got to tell Mama and Papa your plan, Katie said. I'm afraid I was wrong about that plan, Katie. It's not going to work. I'm too small, and it would take too long for me to return to our island all the time. It would be too hard, Katie. 
But Joe and Poppy could help you, Katie insisted. For how long? We can't expect them to help me forever. They need to live their own lives and raise their own family, said Hoagie. Joe's face got very red. He didn't want to start thinking about raising his own flock just yet. Meanwhile, Katie was trying to understand what Hoagie was saying, and she wasn't taking his news very well. Hoagie was also having a hard time coming to terms with leaving his capybara family. He knew Katie would visit him when she could, but he found it impossible to imagine not seeing her every day. Both of the friends started to sniffle, but before their tears fell onto the sand, Mama Kinsey spoke up. Chins up, my darlings. Don't fret. I have some good news of my own. Katie and Hoagie and Katie wiped their noses and listened. Mama Kinsey continued. When the flamingos told us about this island and its abundant fruit and safe beaches, we had to come and see it for ourselves. And what Joe said was absolutely true. Papa Carl and I have decided that it is finally time to relocate. Our island has become more dangerous lately, and on this island, we have found our new forever home. Hoagie and Katie stared in disbelief. Their eyes were round like dinner plates and their mouths opened so wide they could have swallowed a fly. Much to everyone's surprise, they both started crying out of sheer joy. By this time, Dr. Shimko had phoned the house to have his daughter Melody come out to the beach. When she got there, she was amazed at what she saw. Capybaras, young and old, were frolicking in the lake and bouncing on the sand. Two flamingos were flying in different patterns and directions overhead. But the most surprising thing of all was Melody's hamster, Hoagie, acting like he was a member of the group, romping in the middle of it all. Melody pulled out her camera and took a picture. This special moment would be forever frozen in time. Melody and her father understood this group of capybaras was probably the young capybaras family. It was obvious they all belonged together, and it was also very clear that Hoagie was part of their clan. The little capybaras were nuzzling him, and he was happily rolling around like a tiny tumbleweed. It warmed the Shimko's hearts to see their little Hoagie having so much fun and being part of a large capybara group. The Shimkos were excited to have these unusually large rodents as their neighbors. The human started toward the gate, and Melody turned and spotted Hoagie on top of his friend's head. His little face looked worried. Did she think he was going to leave her forever? Was she sad? Much to Hoagie's relief, Melody gave him a warm smile. He knew that that smile meant she would be back soon. Chapter 22 Hoagie Finds His Voice A few weeks after the Capybara clan settled into their new home, Dr. Shimko created yet another special doggy door leading out to the beach. This one was quite large, as it was meant for a growing capybara to crawl through. It was also different because it would only open if given a secret password. The secret code was on a tiny chip inserted under an animal's skin near the neck. The animal would approach the door, the secret code could be read, and click, the door would unlock and could be pushed open. Poor Hoagie and Katie were very scared the day they got their microchips. Katie purred like a car engine and Hoagie kept squirming. However, they were both relieved when it was all over and they weren't hurt. With their secret code readers, they would be able to visit the beach and their clan whenever they wanted to. The first night Hoagie and Katie were able to join the herd on the beach, they threw the best party the island had ever seen. The only party, but still. By the light of the moon, Dipper helped some of the pigs and goats sneak out of the big doggy door. Even the geese flew over the fence to see what the commotion was about, and though they would never admit it, they had a rip-roaring time. Hoagie thought the best part of the evening was when he was finally allowed to perform. At first he was nervous because he would have stage fright again. Before his performance he went off alone. He had all the privacy he needed behind a large tree as he took many long deep breaths. Hoagie wet his lips and began his vocal exercises that he knew so well. <coughs> Me mo my mo moo. How much wood could a woodchuck chuck? He belted. Then to himself he said, what exactly is chucking, anyway? Lastly, he closed his peepers and pretended he was on a grand stage with different colored lights shining down on him. Hoagie imagined himself singing every word clearly and perfectly, while his fans applauded loud as thunder. 
When he opened his eyes, he knew he was as ready as he'd ever be. He made his way back to his friends and family. Hoagie stood on a large rock, puffed up his chest, and cleared his throat. The capybaras covered their little ears like they usually did. Hoagie took a deep breath and belted out a single note. It wasn't half as bad as everyone expected. In fact, it wasn't bad at all. Then Hoagie added to the note until it became a full sentence. One by one, the capybaras unplugged their ears. By the time Hoagie had completed his first verse, the entire audience was listening closely. closely. And once Hoagie began the chorus, everyone joined in. That night, Hoagie sang his little heart out. Everyone was stunned to find Hoagie's voice had deepened and his tone was as smooth as butter. They loved his singing so much that capybaras all begged for another song. Hoagie sang a total of four songs, delighting everyone. That night, as Hoagie and Katie were curling up for a nap on the warm sand, they chatted about their new home and how lucky they were. They were so thankful they had found a great and safe place to live. I can't believe I found my girl again. I mean, what are the odds? Hoagie gasped. And I can't believe there are so many mangoes on this island, Katie whooped. I feel like I am living the best life. My human family and my capybara clan together in the same awesome place. What more could a hamster want? Hoagie couldn't be happier. Over the years, many tales were passed down to the little capybaras about how Hoagie and Katie were the first brave explorers to travel distant lands and finally settle on Dulce Island. Of course, the story changed from time to time. In some tales, the flamingos were giant eagles and the goats were large moose with antlers as sharp as teeth. In other tales, the pigs were wild boars with twirly tusks and the chickens were yappy green ducks. The only animals which stayed the same throughout all the stories were Dipper and the geese. Nobody could make up a better version of them. To hear Hoagie and Katie tell the story, you would think the island's natives were perfect. Every animal, every fruit, every bird, and of course, all the humans were adored. They thought their island was absolute paradise. Well, it kind of was. This wouldn't be the last of Hoagie and Katie's adventures, of course. They would go on to explore other islands and visit old friends like Philippa, the poison dart frog. Over time, Hoagie and Katie would make a bunch of new friends, animals the Shimko saved, wild creatures on the other side of the fence, and even the little hummingbirds who feasted on the trumpet vines in the Shimko's garden. At one point, with the help of Flamingo Joe and Poppy, Hoagie and Katie even went back to their old home to visit old friends and check on Squirt. Dots kept her promise and never bothered them again. But all of their trips never filled them with as much joy as their favorite and most important adventure of all. When they set foot on Dulce Island, found Hoagie's human family, and made the island their forever home. The End Love Hoagie and Katie? Check out Rio Koviak's website for more information. And hey, don't forget to leave a review on Amazon.com. Thanks a lot for listening and reading. See you next time.